On day one, I spawned in as a baby panda. Not a care in the world, living my best life. When suddenly, out of nowhere, a gang of evil orcs came and attacked us. My parents and I backed up into a corner, but there was nothing we could do. They were too strong. The next day, I woke up here, inside a cage. I was trapped, being guarded by one of the orc minions. I could see my parents in the distance. It looks as if they were trapped too. Of course, I tried to break free, but these chains were far too strong, and I was just a weak baby panda. Night fell, but it seemed that the orc had got bored and went away. And then I realized, yeah, I am a tiny baby panda. I was able to sneak right under this chain. I quickly ran to my parents to see if they were okay and find out if there was a way that I could free them. Dad, Mom, I've got to get you guys out of here. Shush, Robo. Don't draw their attention to us. I hear some pandas in Yavin. Robo, you need to get out of here. Don't worry about us, son. Run. Don't get caught. Go. Go now. I can't just leave you guys. Unfortunately, that's exactly what I had to do. The orcs were closing in, and there was no point in me getting caught once more. I managed to scale through this jungle floor and hide inside a fallen tree. Okay, so the first couple of nights were pretty scary to say the least, but I awoke on day three with a bit of optimism. This was my chance to prove myself. I had to save my parents. I didn't really know what I was getting myself in for, but I knew I had to start somewhere. So I chopped down a couple of trees, made myself some tools, and my adventure was about to begin. I only had five hearts, so it was super important that I kept my energy levels up. Thankfully, I found some bamboo and I was able to knock it down with my fists. But then I heard something. It was a panther. It came up right behind me and chased me. It was going to devour me. It was trying to claw its way in, stalking me from outside. He eventually got bored and left me alone. The morning of day four came and my mind began to wonder. Why did we get attacked by those orcs? Where did they come from? Why did they capture us? It was all so strange, but I knew I was going to have to just get myself organized if I stood any chance of saving my parents. I secured this little base and that evening I went outside but realized I was surrounded by drowns. I was too small and too weak to take on any of these mobs. I had to be super careful at night. I woke up on the morning of day five super hungry. I only had two hearts, so I had to munch on my breakfast of bamboo. I decided to get my boat down into the ocean and go exploring. I was surrounded by jungle islands and eventually found a big one that I wanted to explore. I then heard a crazy sound. It was the clashing of swords and clubs. Be gone from our lands, you wretched invaders. Look at this guy. I couldn't believe my eyes. It was a ninja panda. Oh, dude. Where did you learn to do that? Do what, young man? I mean, where did you learn to fight like that? <laughs> well, that's simple. Practice. Seems like that's something you could use if you're going to deal with these orcs. Yeah, those wretched orcs took my family. They tried to take me too. They did? Can you teach me to fight? Of course. My name is Shi Lin, and I swear I will do everything I can to make these woods safe for pandas once more. Awesome. My name is Ropo. When can we start? As soon as you go and fetch me enough iron, only then can I teach you how to make the weapons you'll need. We can't share a sword after all. Now go. I will see you soon. Okay, Xilin. Finally, I had some help. This guy was gonna teach me how to become a fully trained ninja panda. I was super excited, and over the next two days, I decided I was going to make myself a base of operations. A home. I started by chopping down these huge jungle trees and getting the materials I needed to build a base. I decided to build it as a platform off the ground for extra safety. I didn't know what kind of animals were going to try to attack me around here. Anyway, I had fun building this thing and I think it looked pretty good. You may have noticed Xi Lin keeping an eye on me in the background. I then decided it was time to go mining. I needed to get all of that iron that Xi Lin had requested. After mining for a while, I found my first piece of iron. And then, I found myself some diamonds. It was going very well, so I continued mining and got myself lots and lots of iron. It was going perfectly. But while I was down here, something was happening above ground. It was an orc. He came to grief my new home. This crazy orc starts setting my house ablaze. There was fire everywhere. I exited the cave and start putting out the flames as quickly as I could. But then, he attacked. 
It was me versus an orc. I was super scared. I'm still a baby, don't forget. But I fought back this time. I had my axe and I got in close and dealt the final blow. I did it. I finally took out my first orc. Man, I was feeling good. I didn't feel like a baby anymore. But unfortunately, I couldn't really celebrate. I mean, my house was destroyed, and I think now that the orcs knew where I was. It was time for me to get out of here. On day eight, I tiptoed my way deeper into the jungle. I came across some sort of a camp. I wasn't really sure what it was, but I soon found out. An orc warrior came at me again, slashing his huge axe, narrowly missing my head. I had to get out of there. This guy was huge. I was no match for him. I came across some weird, strange looking temple, but I couldn't stop. My life depended on it. I came across a gorge. I had only one option. Whoa! Dude, that was insane. I had to jump in. And then, out of nowhere, it was a hippo. This dude wanted to devour me. Thankfully, I got into the cave, had some food, and got some shell. Okay, so I needed more iron, and I was in a cave, so it seemed like a good situation. That was until this guy came. I was hearing some freaky sounds, but then he appeared from nowhere. It was a gigantic cobra snake. This thing was ferocious. I was down to one heart. I kept on getting hit. Kept on going down to one heart, but I persevered, and I took out the cobra. Bro, that was intense. But I had to keep on going. I continued on, did some mining, and found all of the iron that I needed. I then started to think that maybe I could use some of it before I give it to Xi Ling. I mean, I was hearing some weird sounds around the place, and it's pretty dangerous around here. I made myself a full set of armor and an iron sword. I put it on, it didn't really fit, but at least I was a little bit more protected, because what happened next was insane. A gigantic tiger came out of nowhere, knocked me down deep into the cave and attacked. Thankfully, I had a shield. Man, this guy was strong. He was knocking me back so far, but I kept on striking him with my new sword, and eventually I was able to take him out. Dude, that was far too close. Yo, diamonds! Woohoo! I'll take these. Okay, but I'm hearing more tigers. I think it's time to get out of here. So that's what I did. I got out of the cave, back up into the jungle. But well, man, that was a crazy couple of days. So I kept exploring throughout the jungle to try and find Xi Lin, but I came across another camp. Hey, these are smell something. Uh, I think it's a panda. Get over here. Okay, not good, not good. Time to run again. Oh, dude, this guy is so big. I've got to get out of here. Yeah, so it was time for me to run away again. These guys were getting bigger and stronger. Well, that's what it seemed anyway. I decided to go ahead and climb one of the tallest trees I could find. This thing was absolutely huge. I eventually got to the top. I basically wanted to use it as a lookout tower. I wanted to scour the lands to see if I could get any clues to where Xi Lin may be. I saw in the distance some smoke billowing up behind the trees. I thought that could be it. It was time to get down off this tree and go find my friend. It was pretty high though. I noticed that there was a horse down below. Okay, Ropo, let's see if you can do this. Oh! oh. Yeah. Woo! Nailed it! <laughs> Yeah, that was pretty cool. I managed to jump on the horse's back to break my fall. I then continued on for the rest of the day to see if I could get closer to that smoke signal. But night eventually fell and I decided I needed to be safe. I couldn't be roaming this place, well, at night time. It was just too dangerous. So I start building myself a little shelter. It wasn't much, but it would keep me safe for the night. The morning of day 14 was here. I opened the door to my little shelter and got outside. I wanted to go and find this smoke signal. I wasn't sure if it was Xi Lin, but it's pretty much the only option I had. I saw through a little gap in the trees that there was smoke coming from that area, so that's where I needed to go. I started to travel, realized that I had a full day, so I was pretty confident I could find it. And then I did. I saw the smoke, but beside the smoke I saw an orc. This was not good. It was an orc warrior. These guys are huge. I've never fought one before and he saw me. He came at me. I don't think I could have escaped, so I had to fight him. Yo, dude, this guy is huge. Oh, okay, no. And then, out of nowhere, it was Xi Lin. He was actually here. Take cover, Robo. I will take care of this abomination. 
This is probably one of the coolest things I've ever seen. I mean, a gigantic ninja panda fighting a huge orc warrior. These guys were going at it hard. I couldn't believe my eyes. But Shi Lin took him out with ease. It was amazing. Shi Lin. Whoa, boy, am I glad to see you. It's getting crazy around here. There are orcs everywhere. Careful now, young one. Don't bite off more than you can chew. The most important part of winning a fight is going in if you know you can win. Take a breather and tend to your wounds. Your health is important. But, but hey, I got the iron like you- Your health is more important than anything, Ropo. You can't fight if you're dead. Now rest. Uh, okay, master. You've got it. Uh, I'll, I'll rest up. So that's what I did. I got into this fallen tree and I laid low for the night. I woke up in the morning of day 15 super refreshed. I got the rest just as Ji Lin told me to and it was now time to go and check out the crafting area that he had made for me. He was going to go ahead and make me a katana. Bro, I was so excited. Yo, master, can you teach me how to make one of those epic katana now? Hmm. I suppose it is time. Sit and watch. I will teach you how to make the weapons that you will need to survive. Is this gonna take long? I'll be bored. Ah, there's more to being a great warrior than just having a sharp blade. You'll need strength to back it up. Go gather some wood and build us a small dojo. We have a lot of training to complete and you need to toughen up. Get to work. Bro, that was a lot of work, man. I've only got the foundation down. Good work, young warrior. I have a gift for you. Check the chest and be careful. So this is where things got super exciting for me. I did check the chest and it was a katana. Are you kidding me? Look at this thing. It's literally twice the size as I am. It was a huge katana blade, sharper than anything I had ever held before. Oh, dude, this was so epic. I couldn't wait to get to action with this thing. But first, I had to build a dojo. was my epic dojo. It was so sick. A huge training area and I had a bedroom upstairs too. I was super excited to show it to Ji Lin. Yo, bro, check it out. I finished the dojo. What do you think? Awesome, right? Awesome indeed, Ropo. Now get ready for your true reward. Whoa, I just grew. Oh my goodness, I'm a full-size panda. Haha, <laughs> now I can hold this katana properly. Nice. Day 19, and as you can see, I gained more hearts. Now that I'm a full-size panda, I had eight hearts. I was feeling a lot better. Plus, I got a good night's sleep. I could see that there were different types of weapons and some dummies to train with now in the dojo. Congratulations. A wonderful dojo, Ropo. Now, let's train. So, yeah, Ji Lin wanted to train while I was still pretty hungry. I saw that, that there were shurukens and other types of new weapons that I was looking forward to using. But we didn't really get that far. We just started using the swords against these dummies. I was having a great time until Ji Lin wanted to step things up a little bit. That's a good start, but now let's fight. This dude was crazy. He literally attacked me. He at me as hard as he could. I couldn't believe it. I thought I was going to be able to take this guy on, but hit after hit, he shows me who was boss. A good fight, especially for your first time. Don't worry, you'll only get stronger. Go rest for now. The morning of day 20 was here. I had some breakfast to try to get my health back up because the training the day before with Ji Lin was pretty intense. I heard some commotion coming from downstairs. I wasn't really sure what it was, but I decided to head down and see. What I saw next was insane. It was a gigantic orc. This dude was huge. He started tossing boulders at us. Oh my days, this was intense. Whoa, who is this guy? It's huge. I'm not sure, Robo, but it's out of our league. I've got to try to help you. Oh, dude, this does not look good. Are you okay? What will I do? Run, Robo. 
get out of here. I'll try hold it off. I'll find you later. Run, just run! It was now day 21, and I was all alone in the jungle. I grabbed some water and headed out. I had to explore. It wasn't long before I found some sort of a little village. It had been overrun by orcs. But this time, I was a little bit more confident. I had my training, and I had my samurai sword. I went straight in and started taking out these orc minions with ease. I grabbed myself some resources and decided to just move on. I was feeling super confident now, so I went deeper into the jungle. Again, I found some sort of an outpost. This time, I didn't want to rush straight in because I wasn't sure if there were going to be stronger orcs. So, I decided to position myself above, in a tree, like a true ninja would. I knew that I could gain a good vantage point for up here, and see what was going on, and then make a surprise attack. I waited till nightfall, and when the time was right, I knew that I could take them by surprise. So, I put on my iron armor, and I headed on down. Oh, hello, your orc. Time for me and you to battle. Yeah, so as you guys can see, that fight went all night long, and into the next day. It was a ferocious battle, but I kept on persevering. I was low on hearts, but I took out the final orc. It was now time to just keep moving forward. But then I fell in this hole. Ah, that hurt. So, days 25 and 26 were pretty chill. I did come across these orcs on the beach. I think they were fishing or something, and I was able to take them out with ease. I decided to join them. Well, not join them, but take over. I wanted to get some fish myself. I mean, I was getting kind of bored of bamboo, so I spent a little while fishing and basically just chilling out. I noticed a kind of cool bridge up ahead, so I decided to get over it. And then I noticed a big building in the distance. I wasn't really sure what it was, but I knew it was big. I had to get closer. There was a lower entrance that I went through, and I went through a lot of bamboo. It was tempting to stop and take it, but then I came across an orc. This little guy was no match for me. I took him out with ease, like I usually do. Anyway, I decided to press forward, but then another orc came out of nowhere. I had to deal with this guy too. And then I heard something in the distance. It wasn't an orc minion. It sounded like an orc giant. I finally got up to this large structure. Turns out it was a dojo, but it had been damaged. I got in and found this guy. Oh, hey there, man. Um, are you by any chance helping to fight off all the orcs that are terrorizing this jungle? Wait, a panda? But I thought, never mind. I am helping fight off the orcs. Some giant orc came rampaging through here. It's fortunate that you arrived. Although you look like you could use some help. But first, get me some wood, and some stone, and repair my dojo. In return, I'll teach you a thing or two that will help you in this quest. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna be honest, this guy did seem kinda strange, but I mean, he looked super powerful, and his dojo was pretty amazing. I mean, it was banged up, but I knew I could learn from this guy, so I helped him out. I put out all the fires, and decided to build up some of the walls that had been knocked down by the giant orc. He actually said that I could stay here for a couple of days, so I made myself a shelter and got some rest. The very next morning, I woke up feeling good. I knew I was going to learn a lot from this monk, but when I headed outside, I could not believe it. It was the orcs again. They were everywhere. We were under attack. This was not good. The monk tried to fight them off, and he just told me to leave. Go. Just get out of here. So I took his advice. There were so many of them. I had to jump off the side of this ledge, but thankfully I landed in some water. I had to get across the river. I'm not the best swimmer in the world, but I had no choice. They were chasing me, but now they were vulnerable. In the water, I was able to use my slash attack with my epic katana. I took out the remaining orc minions and got out of there. All right, I need to find some shelter. Yep, you guys guessed it. It happened again. I was surrounded by orcs once more. They knew where I was every time. It was insane. Outside, there were archers, minions, warriors, and even an orc giant. There was no way I was going to survive. I had to burrow down, dig a tunnel to try escape. I managed to escape. 
but I didn't have much time. I was surrounded. I tried to get deep into the jungle and that's when the giant tossed the boulder at me. It went straight by my head, narrowly missing me. If that had hit me, I was done for. I had to just run, but then I fell into a little dead end. Next thing, out of nowhere, it was a minion and he dealt a killer blow. Whoa, wh where am I? Yo, Monk. Ah, good. You're still alive. I wasn't sure you were going to make it. What happened? They nearly got you, that's what. You were weak. I think I can awaken the flame inside of you though, so I've got a plan. Go find some gold. Make yourself a weighted gi. Wearing that should build up some muscle on those flabby bones of yours. Yeah, so anyway, he did call me flabby, but I decided I was gonna do what he asked. I was pretty sure that he saved me from all those orcs, so I wanted to see if this guy could awaken the flame inside of me, as he says. Anyway, I needed to find gold, so I had to get down deep into the mines to try and find some. I, I think he wanted me to wear gold because it's heavy and do training with heavy gold on because it was going to make me more muscly and stronger. I don't know, he seemed kind of strange, but I was just going to do what he asked. It was day 36 and I used some of the ores that I had just mined to upgrade my tools, but the most important was the gold, and I think I had enough. It was time to head back to the dojo to meet the dragon monk to see what he wanted to do next. Good work, bear. Make your gold armor and let's get to work. Okay, so that's what I did. I made the gold armor, put it on, and again, it didn't really fit, which made it feel super heavy, but I think that's what he wanted. And I began training. Oh, oh, that was super tiring. I think it's time for bed. Thanks, Mug. Day 37 and I awoke from my slumber. Man, I was tired from all the action the day before. It looks as if the monk wanted to talk to me. So I went over and he said we were about to battle. Yep, we got straight into it. This was the next part of my training. I actually had to take on the dragon monk. This was insane. I kept my distance and got a few shots in. I think he was impressed because I actually was doing some damage on him. I had to back it up though. If I got close, this guy would absolutely destroy me. I did, however, get one little attack in, but then he got angry and hit me with that boulder. It was not good. I asked him to stop, so thankfully he did. Dude, that was some serious training. Good. There is fire in that belly after all. I think you're ready to go take on that big orc. Go clear as many trees as you can and pile up what you cut down. Start a huge fire. Use it as a signal and draw out that beast. Time for you to take him out. Over the next two days, I got to work. I gathered as much materials as I could. I started off by getting some of the hay and then I went down to a location that I thought would suit. I needed to draw out this giant orc and take him out to truly impress the dragon monk. I needed to now go and get myself a flint and steel, so the next morning I headed out. I found myself some gravel, got the flint, and then went down and got some iron so I could make the flint and steel. Now that mission was complete, and now all I had to do was light my bonfire. This thing was looking pretty sick. I mean, this is definitely gonna draw some attention. I was super happy with it, and I decided it was time to go hide in the bush and wait for my prey. Day 40 was here, I geared up, and I was ready, because I could hear the sound of orcs. I rushed out and realized, wait a second, it was only a couple of orc minions and an archer. This isn't the giant orc. Anyway, I still had to take them out, and they did do a bit of damage on me, but I was waiting for the giant. I remember. Oh no. Okay, back it up, back it up. This guy is so big. Okay, he's super strong as well. Don't panic, don't panic. So, yeah, guys, you can kind of tell from my voice that I was panicking. This dude was absolutely huge. His thunder shock attack was crazy. Stomping on the ground, sending me flying. He did some serious damage, but I was using my training. I was doing damage of my own. I kept my distance, just as the dragon monk taught me. Finally, I decided to get in close when he was low on health. I lay down some slashes with my katana and it was done. He was down, falling into the fire, the flames consuming him. I destroyed an orc giant. Woohoo! 
that Dragon Monk was going to be so impressed. Well, well, I've been watching from afar. Excellent display, Bear. You've earned the right to learn more from me. Yo, that's awesome. Thanks so much. But I kind of need to save my family still. They were captured. Could we train while traveling? Travel? No, absolutely not. I have to stay in the dojo and, uh, uh never mind. Okay, go save the other bears, or at least try. <laughs> yes, yeah, so the dragon monk did act a little strangely there, but I didn't think too much of it. I decided to continue on. Back into the jungle I went, and I actually came across our old dojo. Unfortunately, there was no sign of Ji Lin. I didn't know where he was, so I decided to head inside. And then I found these little guys. I kind of thought they might be friendly, but then they attacked me. These things actually packed a punch. I had to take them out, and with one swipe, I did so. I then remembered that we did have some more weapons in this dojo. I got myself these things. They're like throwing stars. The shurukens were awesome, and then there were other type of blades too. And then I remembered there was a secret stash. Oh yeah, I love Ji Lin. He left me a brand new katana blade, because my other one was getting a little dull and some of the throwing stars. That was a pretty epic day. I still didn't really know what those little walking logs were though. So the realization that I haven't seen my parents in over 40 days started to kick in. I moved forward into the jungle and it looks as if I found more of these little ants. So basically walking trees. There was like 10 of them this time. I had to use my new weapons and all of my training. It took me a while to take them out and I did need to take a break. The next morning I decided to continue on. I found a little area that I wanted to get to, so I jumped in my boat. Didn't really fit into it, but I jumped into it nonetheless. I got over to the other little island, and then I decided to go deeper into it. This seemed a lot denser, more jungle areas. I knew I was going to find something in here, but I didn't think I would find it this quick. It was more ants, but this time they were way bigger. They actually looked like people or, or animals. I don't know. They had crazy weapons and they were coming at me hard. This was a proper battle. I was able to take out the first one, but then there was like some sort of a wizard one. This guy was using his staff to swirl leaves at me. Super dangerous. I picked up the staff and then realized I had not a clue what this thing was, so I quickly... decided to continue on. I've got to be honest, I was feeling a little low. I was no closer to finding my parents. I had no idea where they were. I had no idea if they were still alive. No idea if they were safe. I was getting used to dealing with the orcs, but now I had to deal with the ants too. It was like they were multiplying, coming out of any nook and cranny within this jungle. I had to back it up. I wasn't feeling very confident. I had to go back and get my ranged weapons, my shurukens. But I decided to just head back in. I mean, I didn't have any other choice. I needed to find out where my parents were. I told the monkey to guard my house and I headed back in. I thought I saw all the ants. The little ones, the bigger ones, the scary ones. But then I saw this dude. Oh my days. An ant guardian. He was ferocious. He hit the ground with a force I'd never seen before. He came at me hard. He was using wind attacks and everything. And then I saw one of my brethren. It was a trap panda. This could mean something. This could be big. I had the battle of my life on my hands. His ant guardian was taking no damage. My katana seemed weak against it. I had to back up. I had to use my ranged attack. But every time I tried to get away, he sucked me closer with his breath. It was an intense battle. I eventually got the high ground and rained down some of the blows. And I took him out. I really didn't think I was going to be able to do that, but I did it. It was insane. What a battle. I was able to free my friend. I think I was getting closer to finding what happened to my parents. I didn't really get much information off him, but that he was captured. I saw in the distance a really big tree. 
I wasn't really sure what it was, so I tried to climb another tree that was close by. I needed to get a better look. This thing was gigantic. I was thinking that maybe it housed the key to finding my parents. There was cages all around it, maybe the answer behind capturing all the pandas. But then something happened that I couldn't believe. Oh my days, are you kidding me? I gained five extra hearts, and I turned into a panda that could stand up. It was now day 51, and of course I had evolved. I had now 15 hearts. I was becoming more and more like Ji Lin, my ninja master. I needed to get up to this tree to find out what was going on. And then, when this little guy came out of nowhere, I landed the final shot with my samurai sword. It cracked and broke. All I had now were my shurikens. Not good. I had to head back home because I'd run out of food too. I was not prepared to go and check out that gigantic tree because I didn't know what was going to be up there waiting for me. I decided to get the food that I had growing at home and to go and try and get more weapons. So it was back to the dojo where it all began, where Ji Lin started training me. I thought that there might be a samurai sword in here somewhere. The one that I found in my new home had been damaged too much. But thankfully when I got inside the dojo, I checked all the chests and did in fact find a brand new samurai sword. I knew that I had to make this thing, well, a little bit better. I needed to enchant it. I taught back to day 8. I remembered when I was a baby, I went by some sort of a sacred temple. I thought maybe I could find something cool there. So I headed back and I eventually found it. It took a couple of days but there it was. The ancient temple shrouded in mystery. I had no idea what it was, what was in there, but I was about to find out. I didn't really want to dive to the bottom and climb all the way over again, so I decided to build my way across this ravine. I got some wood and got to work. I got across and headed straight over to this temple. I was looking forward to finding what was inside. And there was a hatch, so I was able to go straight in. And I was super surprised when I found exactly what I was looking for. It was an enchanting table, surrounded by chests with books. This was absolutely epic. All I had to do now was go and get some lapis. Yeah, so I found myself some diamonds and I decided to go mining once more. I pretty much had enough to go ahead and make a full set of armor, so that was the new plan. So the end goal changed a little bit. It was to go ahead and get fire aspect for my sword, which I managed to do, but now I was going to get a full set of diamond armor as well. But first I had to make myself an iron anvil. This way I could put all of the enchantments onto my sword. And that's exactly what I did. I now had an epic sword that was going to destroy any of the ants that got in my way. So this was a super successful week, but I wasn't quite finished. I wanted to get myself a full set of enchanted diamond armor, so that's exactly what I did. I put it on and I looked absolutely ridiculous. Yep, it didn't really fit, but I mean it was better than nothing. <laughs> oh man, I think I was ready. I was ready to head back to that gigantic tree and see what mysteries it was hiding. So, on the morning of day 57, with my armor on, I headed back to this gigantic tree. I wanted to find out what was at the top, so I started to travel up these long vines. It was like it was a walkway, pre-made, obviously by the ants. So as I traveled up, of course, I came across more of them, wanting to attack me, wanting to take me out. Luckily, these guys actually got stuck in a tree and they couldn't get to me, but this guy could. I used my jump attack, but I went too far. I sustained a lot of damage. I was down to like three hearts. This guy was pretty tough, but I moved forward. Night fell, and the battle continued. I had to get some rest. I didn't want to go up there low on health. The next morning, on day 58, I continued up to the top of this tree. I've got to be honest, it was a lot longer than I thought it was, but when I did get to the top, I was met by something insane. This guy was absolutely huge. You dare enter the home of the Ent King? You will pay. Okay, so it looks as if the battle was on. It was me versus the Ent King. He sent out all of his minions, and his special attacks were insane. Check out this thing. It was like a leaf tornado that shot me up into the air and took me for all my hearts. The battle raged on. Shooting out branches from the ground, he was doing some serious damage to me. But I was using all of my training and all my special attacks. I was able to grind him down. And eventually, with one last swooping strike, I had defeated him. Ah, please, stop. Why would I stop? 
You're the one that's captured all my friends and family. Where's my parents? We were led to believe that it was the pandas that were destroying our forest. My kind feels what the forest feels. All of the trees being cut down, all of the trees being burned, it scars us. We're confused and desperate. The forest won't survive if we don't stop it. Wait, you think it's the pandas? The animals of this forest aren't the ones doing it. I'm trying to stop this. It's the orcs. Please, free the animals, and I'll do what I can to save what's left of this forest. Oh, noble panda, our sincere apologies. We were misguided. If you truly wish to set things right, we believe that a human brought the orcs to these lands. Try and find him. He must be the key to all of this misfortune. We are in your debt and forever your ally. Okay, so I just learned a lot, and my brain was kind of fried right now. Turns out the end guys are not that bad after all, and he suspects a human is behind all of this? The only human we know is the monk. On day 60 I was back home, but I couldn't stay for long. It was time to go and confront the monk. We had to find out if he was actually a good guy. I was starting to believe that he wasn't. When I got to his dojo, it was completely different. The dragon head statue was in flames. There was fire everywhere, as if some sort of an evil spirit had flown through here. There was some sort of a weird pedestal. I had to check this out, but not now. I needed to get some rest beforehand. I knew it could be big. Let's be honest guys, things were getting absolutely hectic. The next day I went straight out to go and get on top of this pedestal to see where it would take me. I was right. It was a teleportation device, and it took me into the mouth of the dragon statue. And it turns out, it was a nether portal. Next thing I know, yep, I'm a panda in the nether. I came across, well, the normal mobs. Honestly, I didn't really know what I was doing at this stage. And after some traveling around, I found something magnificent. It was some sort of a huge dragon temple, a massive structure and some sort of a battle arena. I moved forward slowly, not knowing what to expect, but I knew it couldn't be good. I got into the center of this arena and, well, nothing happened until out of nowhere, these crazy little demon ninjas came at me. There was like five, six, seven, eight, nine, I don't know how many there were, but they were intense. They were so fast. They were definitely the fastest opponents that I had ever taken on. But again, I defeated them. And thankfully they dropped some extra weapons, and they were enchanted too. More shurukens that I could toss from a distance. And then... These gigantic guardians spawned. They were able to toss rocks from a distance. Now this battle was going to be difficult. I had no idea what these guys were. I'd never seen them before. I was super low on food and getting very low on health as well. But thankfully, at the corner of my eye, I saw that there was something inside of this dragon head. I got down, and inside the chest was golden apples and more bamboo. I was blessed. I was able to munch on these golden apples, and it gave me more confidence to go and take on these guardians once more. Bout raged on, and it was time for me to put all my training to the test. I had to grind them down and eventually I took out the second one. He was done, down and done for. And then I heard the sound of a door opening. I had to get closer to him. Something was going on above me that I didn't know about. <laughs> Xi Lin, you fool. You honestly think that your young protege can defeat me? While I have captured you and put you under my spell, <laughs> I won't even have to do it. You will. <laughs> so it turns out that the dragon monk was the bad guy after all, and he had captured Ji Lin. He put him under some sort of a spell. I didn't know any of this at the time, but when I got to the top, I found out. It was Ji Lin. I was super excited to see him. Yo, bro, what's happening? What are you doing here? Robo, get back. I've been put under a spell. Things just got crazier and crazier. It turns out that Ji Lin was under some sort of a spell from the Dragon Monk. He was attacking me. The monk had warped his mind to try and kill me. It was insane. I had to fight my master. This was super difficult. 
Not only because he was a master ninja, but because I didn't want to hurt him. We kept on battling, and because of the weapons that I had and the training that he gave me, I was able to break the spell. You've done it, Ropo, but you're not finished yet. You've got to find the monk. He is trying to summon an ancient dragon of fire that will destroy the forest once and for all. Whoa, this is not good. Be careful, young panda. You will need some new armor. He brought the orcs to the woods to help him, and he's been using the trapped animals as payment to the orcs. Take this new armor and go defeat them all. Whoa, sick. I look just like you. After some more traveling, I made it back to the dojo. I knew that I had to draw the dragon monk here somehow. The only way that I was going to get my parents back is if I defeated him, so I had a plan. I wanted to grief his base so bad that he would have to come back. I wanted to get myself an ice and change his fiery temple into a cold cavern. So I needed some silk touch to put on a pickaxe so I could get myself some ice. So that's the little mission I did on day 71, and I was successful. I couldn't wait to get this guy. So over the next week, I had to do a lot of traveling. I remember at one stage, I did see a big mountainous area, and I thought, well, there could be ice or snow at the top of it. When I eventually did get close after a couple of days, I did see that it was looking kind of snowy at the top. I had to trek all the way through the night and into the next day. But when I got to the top, I found what I needed. I found an abundance of ice and water, which will be perfect for destroying the monk's dojo. He's sure to return then. A couple of days later, I made it back to the fiery dojo, but it was time to change that. I start placing down the ice and some of the water. I knew that this was going to annoy the monk so much. Wherever he was, it was gonna make him come back. I destroyed his flaming dragon head. It was now covered in ice and water. Now all I had to do was wait. Just as I expected, on day 80, he returned. Oh, hey there, dragon monk. Nice of you to show up, you coward. It's me versus you, right here, right now, the final battle. You will never summon that dragon. You furry little fool. To think that I thought that you had the fire in your belly. You have nothing. You have no idea what you've done. I'll break your bones. Turn them to dust for this. Okay, so the battle was on. The first thing he did was toss a boulder at me. It hit me straight in the head. Did some damage, but I was now strong. I didn't even realize when I evolved to have this suit of armor, I got more hearts. This guy was super angry that I was defeating him, and he was able to summon the soul of the fire dragon. He now had extra strength and was able to use the dragon in crazy attacks. Nothing like I had faced before. I had to use all the remaining golden apples I had, and all my enchanted stars, but I was winning. Uh, you may have stopped me, Panda, but it's too late for you. <laughs> You've lost! Uh, I've won! <laughs> You're beaten, Monk. Just give it up. That guy was a deluded fool. I had defeated him, but he was using the orcs against me. They were going to leave with my parents. I was never going to see them again. I had to go save them. Day 81, I headed back home to resupply and grab some food. I was super happy that I got rid of the monk, but I still had a mission. I had to find my parents, and I had to save them. I now knew that it was the orcs that had them all along, but I have no idea where they are. I have to find their base. My idea was to capture an orc, so I headed back to one of the outposts. I needed to interrogate an orc to try and find out where they were, where their main base was. So I had to come up with another new plan. I needed to capture one of these guys. I had to set a trap. I knew that these guys weren't too smart, so a simple trap would do. I dug a hole and I covered it up with some long grass. I had to get some animals to try and lure one of the orcs over here so he could fall in and I could then interrogate him. After climbing the side of this little mountain, I did go ahead and find some mountain goats. I leashed them up and I brought them down to my trap. It was set up. It was time to just sit and wait. On the night of day 90, an orc minion walked up. 
He was enticed by the beautiful goat that he saw in front of him, and he walked straight into my trap. <laughs> I knew my plan would work. Ah, who put this hole here? I was looking forward to some delicious goat. Oi, you, get me out of here or I'll turn you into a rug. Yeah, I don't think so, my little friend. You're coming back to my place. We need to talk. So when I got this guy caged up back at my home, I started to interrogate him. I was asking him where his leaders were, where the main camp was. I'll never tell you anything. I am very hungry, though. Basically, these guys are just constantly hungry and all they want is food. So that's what I did. I headed back outside, slayed some pigs, and got the food that this guy was craving. Oh, please, please give me some. Okay, I'll tell you everything you need to know. Just give me the food. No problem, my man. So the orc spilled the beans. He told me exactly where to go. It was a secret island to the north of here. I had to get there fast. So on day 92, we headed out once more. I wasn't quite sure where we were going, but I knew that we had to head north. That orc had no reason to lie to me. He was just hungry and scared. Anyway, I continued on into the night, didn't really find anything. This island was too small and too bare. So I went out the other side and kept on going. The next day, I found it. This had to be it, the orc camp. The first thing I saw was a watch out tower with an archer, posted, waiting for an attack. And that's exactly what he got. I jumped in, got him by surprise, and came in and dealt the final blow. I was super powerful now. I was about to free this panda when suddenly I was attacked from behind. It was a wake up call. I need to be super careful. Things are getting dangerous. On day 94, it was time to carefully push forward. I needed to take out all of these watchtowers and all of the orc minions surrounding this island. I was able to save a couple of pandas. Although that one didn't seem to care. When I got closer to the center of the island, I realized that the orcs had a huge base. A gigantic outpost where all of them were gathering. Something big was happening. I had to get in closer and take them all on. It was insane. There were so many of them. And orc giants everywhere. I did take a lot of big shots, but I was able to recoup with my golden apples and food. Although now my sword had been dulled, I had to sharpen it. I gathered these cobbles and used the iron anvil to sharpen my blade once more. I was back in the game, back in the battle. The sun rose once more and the battle raged on. Another giant orc came at me hard. I used my range, took my shots and picked my moments. And I was victorious. The giant orc fell and I pushed forward. I was able to get in and save a lot more pandas, but unfortunately it wasn't my parents. I still didn't know where they were. I had to look around the camp. I wasn't really sure what I was looking for, but I had to check in every single building. But then I saw an iron door. This was the only one, so they must be hiding something. And they were. It was a map. I knew that this could be the location of my parents and maybe the king of the orcs. So on day 98, I left the gigantic orc camp in search of the secret island. I got in the water and sailed out. I thought I was gonna find this thing straight away, but it actually took a full day. This was a secret location that no one had ever been before. The sun rose on day 99 and I was fearless. I knew that my parents were in here and I had to save them. I didn't do all of this work and all of this training for nothing. This was my time. This was my moment. I charged in and I started taking out these orc warriors as if they were nothing. I was far superior. I could not be defeated. They kept on coming at me late into the night of day 99. But the more and more that came at me, the more and more that fell. Well, looky here. Nice to finally meet you, bear. You think you could take me on? Well, we've got some spare cages for you, so why not? Come on. The Orc King charged at me as hard as he could. His weapon was insanely sharp. It was time for me to put all of my training to the test once more. He hit me with an excellent shot and charged me. He gave me no time at all. 
I could see my parents in the distance. They were trapped. I had to do them proud. This guy was using every trick in the book. It was nasty. He was using power slams to come at me hard, but I was able to fend him off with my attacks. I kept on persevering, damaging him when I could. My parents watched on as I grinded him down, and I slashed in with the final blow and finally defeated the Orc King. <laughs> yes, I did it. And now I have his glaive. Get out of here, you minion fools. All the Orcs retreated, knowing that I was too powerful. I then went over and saved my mom, straight away getting over and freeing my dad. We did it! We defeated all of the evil and saved my parents.